so yes, so we have three uh, speakers this morning. Uh, the first will be uh, Roy Cross, who teaches, like many of you know, at uh, Concordia, the Mel Oppenheim School of Cinema. Uh, he studied uh, for his undergraduate degree at the University of Virginia and received his MFA from Concordia. Uh, his feature film, So Far Away in Blue, uh, which was released in Canada, was warmly compared to the work of Leonard Cohen by many critics and reviewers, which, is, uh, which, which says a lot <laughs> of the quality and the beauty of that film. He's received funding from uh, different agencies and uh, councils, uh, as well as the Canada Council. He's received uh, funding from um, three provincial film industry funding bodies, as well as the NFB, and his films have played in festivals and screens around the world. And he's going to talk to you about a project that's very dear to his heart as he, he, that he's been carrying for a number of years on um, uh, processing and creating sustainable film uh, processing techniques. So I'll let him. Press and hold. Good morning. Um, thank you, Andre. That's uh, I have to live up to that now. My goodness, those high expectations. Um, thank you so much uh, for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here today. Um, I am <clears throat> first and foremost uh, a university professor teaching filmmaking. I was a filmmaker at one time. Now I'm a university professor who makes films. Um, I'm not a scholar. Uh, my knowledge is specific to practice. So I'm coming at it uh, from, uh, from that end of things. So if you're, anyway, I guess that's what all three of us will be doing this morning. So um, I don't, I, I'm not going to get into a biography. I have a presentation on my current research that I'd like to share with you. Um, and maybe there'll be a little bit of digression and my biography can come up, but um, I've been make, making films since I was in high, high school, Super 8, um, and uh, I'm still working with film and with emulsion. <coughs> it's funny, well anyway, I'll bring that anecdote up later, but uh, most of my work is in black and white. I'm not sure why, it's just when I see things, that's how I see it, so uh, my work is in black and white. So uh, I'll just start. My uh, presentation this morning is called The Lab Calf, and um, <clears throat> some of you may uh, know that show from a few years ago. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Breaking Bad. Yeah, affirmative. Okay. That's Walt. That's me. And uh, that's me uh, processing 16-millimeter uh, film in my bathtub at home in my flat. And um, I've got all the uh, precautions, you know, I guess I'm exposed, got some skin exposed there, but uh, um, I've got the respirator and the glasses and the nit nitro gloves and the, the coat. And I built a, a vent. I used the vent in my bathroom and bought a dryer hose and I was venting the fumes out of my apartment with this homemade. And um, um, yeah, so that's how I was working um, for uh, quite a long, long time. And um, um, I think uh, a couple of days after this experiment when I was working, you know, I was really careful to keep everything localized to the bathroom and then uh, cleaned up. And, you know, the next day I was walking around my flat and I could notice little uh, uh, spots of white powder around my house, the kitchen, the living room, different places on the wall. And that was uh, the fix that, because I had been moving, and so it's transparent when it's wet, but when it dries, it reverts back to uh, a white powder form. And so I saw that I was leaving residue throughout my house, and my kids sometimes live with me. So um, I started to think about that and how maybe that wasn't so healthy. So most of my practice, some of you maybe are familiar with this, many of you are not. I used to process uh, film in uh, an old military processing tank, and it's a very simple device. Um, you would take your exposed film and put it on um, one reel 
spool it onto one of the reels in the dark, uh, attach it to the other spool, pop that lid down. There's two little cranks on the top. Uh, you close up, there's a, a drainage thing here at the bottom. You pour your chemistry in and you wind the film back and forth. So you wind the film through the chemistry, back and forth, back and forth. And it usually is about, you would try, and it's about 50 winds per minute. And it would take about 10 minutes to do the developer. So that was one of the devices that I used a lot. There's this Russian um, Soviet Lomo spiral tank. I think Charles was using that. I don't know if he's here this morning. Uh, Charles used that to pr pr process all the film that we're going to be looking at. Uh, it wasn't so good with that one. That's a, that's a nice device, but it's, um, it's a bit tricky to load. Um, and you have to wind the film on in the dark on a spiral. And you, whenever I've tried to use it, um, the film always touched. And it, uh, the emulsion would touch the, the base on the wind. And so some parts weren't always exposed. And then uh, the other method that I would use is just a bucket. In the old days, you just fill the bucket with chemi chemistry. You turn off the lights. You put on some gloves. You take your film, and you just spill it all into the bucket. And you mix it around. and. And then you might have three buckets in the tub, and you pull it all out. And so I would, I would process in that, in that way. Is that good for sound back there? So I'm a little anxious. I need to move, move around. So uh, these were the, uh, wow, is it ever big? Uh, these were my uh, processing materials for the last, for those, I guess that's 25 years. Uh, used a lot of this. And um, so these are, these are, uh, traditional classic over-the-counter chemistry that you can buy for darkroom photography. Um, and this is the stuff that I used um, forever and ever. And then I discovered that these exist. Anyone know what MSDS is? Manufacturer Safety Data Sheets. Yeah. Every chemical and every element that you can buy, even table salt, has an MSDS. And it's proper storage, how to handle the material, what to do if there's a spill, what to do if there's a fire. Anyway, some of them are very complicated and very complex. So um, I found uh, this is the, uh, the MSDS for uh, the, um, the developer I was using. And uh, this is just page one of, or page two of seven or eight pages. And so I was reading and I thought, oh, Genetic defects causing cancer, damaging fertility, unborn child may cause. So I was thinking, hmm, this is maybe not so good. This is not so good. Um, yeah, I was a bit frightened, I guess. So, and this is the part, this is the missing link part. I don't recall what happened. Uh, but somewhere in there, I decided to start looking for safer ways to work with film and film processing. And I discovered this, caffeinol. What is caffeinol? Good question. Um, a professor at the Rochester Institute of Technology in 1995 commissioned his undergraduate chemistry class to examine the chemical reaction between uh, emulsion and chemistry and see if they couldn't uh, find alternative materials um, to act as the, de the developer. So they were all out there re researching, and they came up with uh, coffee. So um, less uh, the uh, caffeinol, that's the, I guess, uh, I don't know if that's in the OED or not yet, but uh, perhaps soon. So caffeinol, uh, these are the ingredients that I use to process film now. Um, uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty clear. Um, over the last um, 20 years since the caffeinol recipes were first um, discovered or uh, found to work, people, photographers mostly, predominantly photographers have embraced it and have been looking for ways to tink tinker with the chem chemistry and to play with the recipes. Um, and so... Instant coffee was good, but if you add a little bit of vitamin C, uh, it helps with the alkaline. If you add some washing soda, some sodium car car carbonate, it helps with the, uh, with the development process. Um, 
So um, I found this whole online community like you can today. And so um, I shot some film uh, and I did a test in my kitchen. And uh, these are my first tests. So uh, there's the neg negative, obviously. And, and I, it's just shot on old uh, plus X uh, 35 millimeter film. And, uh, and then pro process. So I was, uh, I, was, I was excited when I saw that. The fact that there was an image there was one thing. And the fact that it was a pretty good image was an other thing, so I was inspired. Uh, and then I f did a little more reading and I found out if you had a little pinch of salt, it helps to clear the base. So I tried a little pinch of salt and it gives me this nice sepia wash. Um, anyway, so, um, so what I decided to do based on these results is I shot a little bit more film, like 30 seconds, and uh, processed it in um, a Morris tank. The, re the rewind tank. This is just the developer that I'm working with. So I have a slide here. And um, let's see if I, uh, we'll just roll. That's my son. The film stock's about 15 years old. It's just stuff that I had in the free freezer. So, uh, oh, and the uh, my little digression is uh, yesterday when I was in the archive, I saw the camera uh, <laughs> that I used to shoot that. There's a there's a Soviet built Comvas uh, uh, 1M with a turret lens. Um, mine's uh, mine's a little bit mine's I think five or six years newer than the one that's in the behind the glass case, but that's what I shot that with. Um, so, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was super impressed and really inspired. So that was the uh, developer. Um, and so then I started to look for alternatives to the fix. For those of you that aren't familiar with uh, the photochemical process for, for processing film, there's a development phase where um, you uh, pro process the film uh, to create the image, but then you have to fix and you have to wash away all the unexposed silver crystals that are on the film. And that's done with a hypo and a fix. And so that washes away uh, all the unexposed silver so that when you um, bring it out into the light, it doesn't all go black. So um, uh, all the research that I could find, all the photographers that I found were working with caffeinol but they were working with traditional Kodak or photochemical fixers, which are still not quite as genetically, uh, not, not causing the same genetic defects as the developer is, but still quite to toxic and definitely not safe to drink or to ingest. So, um, so I wanted to find uh, an alternative to, to the fix because I thought, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going green. I'm going to go full on green here. So I went back and I did some research on what the photographers were doing back in the early days. Um, and they used high concentrations of salt water as their fix. Um, and uh, then I found this, again, strange little community online called Film Wa Wasters. And they're a devoted group of photographers all over the world who um, still are shooting film, medium format, 35, large format, uh, and posting their results and talking about, you know, oh, did you hear the sad news? Fu Fuji's not making any more film. And it's like, oh, yeah, but I heard the Soviet, there's an old Soviet plant, and somebody's going to start producing emulsion. And so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting little community. And I found uh, this guy, Brian Chernick. I meet a lot of men online. Um, that was, that's my only joke for the day, so... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Brian, yes. So Brian, um, Brian processed uh, these images in caffeinol. And uh, both of them were done in caffeinol. And the one on the left was uh, fixed in this particular brand of archival rapid fixer. And this one was fixed in salt water. Uh, this is the 
this is the rub. That's the rub part um, that, um, that stood out. But it's impressive. Again, it's an impressive result for working with just salt and water. So, um, yeah, there's a little bit of text here. So far, yeah, the only uh, results that I could find are, uh, and it's quite a high solution of salt, I think uh, 330 grams is the maximum um, the solubility of uh, salt in water, so it's a pretty slurry um, mixture. Long immersion times. Um, again, it's called rapid fixer for a reason. It's very brief time. Um, and uh, I would do, uh, uh, when, you, when you do fix, you, um, you're washing away all the silver, the unexposed s silver that's on the emulsion, and that silver uh, goes into the fix. Um, and if you just pour that down the drain, then those heavy metals go back into the environment. So a lot of labs have um, silver recovery processes, and there's some of them are electrolyte, and um, they're quite expensive. And you know, if you're running large quantities of fix, you can recover enough silver, and I don't know, somebody gives you a little bit of money for them. Um, but I've been. Um, I was uh, throwing just steel wool. If you throw steel wool into a bucket of fix over a cu couple of days, the silver will uh, <coughs> bind to it, and then you can take the steel wool out and take it to a hazardous waste uh, site. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, really excited, but 48 hours of running film uh, just seemed a bit uh, excessive. Uh, the Lomo tank, uh, where's the Lomo tank? The Lomo tank is a full immersion, so the, it, it doesn't require winding. Um, this is a really, this is a possible solution. Uh, one of the problems um, with this one is that it's fussy to load. Because it's built in the Soviet days, uh, they're harder to find. Uh, the plastic's really brittle, uh, and you can only do 50 feet. Where's Charles? Charles, here yet? Charles, we talked about the limits of 50 feet last night. Um, so, but it's a possibility, but, um, you know, I'm a motion picture filmmaker and a hundred feet of film is one minute. So if I'm doing a feature film and I need to process 20,000 feet of film and I got to do 50 feet at a time, I'm booking into the monastery and, you know, going into deep, dark, uh, invisible places. Um, but it could work. Uh, okay, I guess I just sort of said all that. So uh, I needed to find a solution for longer immersion times. And I found and met another guy online, Martin. And Martin's a retired uh, firefighter who processes film on the side and has been for quite a while. He processes Super 8 film, mostly. And what he does is, um, if you can imagine, say, a piece of plexiglass the size of maybe a record album. And I can use that reference now because records are 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 hip again, so everyone knows what I what I mean when I say a record album. And what he would do is he would he would wind the film around this plexiglass frame, and uh, lay it down in a development tray in a dark a dark room. So this is this is a fairly standard black and white dark room s setup. There'll be a uh, there'll be a bath, and so he's got a developer here. It looks like he's got a stop there, a fix. I don't know what that one is. Uh, maybe it's a pre-wash, and then he's got a wash tank there. So um, what he would do is he would wind the film, emulsion out, lay it down in these tanks of chem chem chemistry, and have full immersion. So the film's in contact with the chem chemical at all times, and he would move them through the trays. But he was using traditional chem chemistry. But I was thinking... This is a way for me to um, immerse uh, large amounts or immerse film in um, saltwater fix. Um, yeah, that's actually not uh, Martin's dark room. That's just a slide I found. So then I stumbled onto this, and I'm sorry, it's terrible re resolution, but it, it's from the 50s. And it was somebody was marketing a 16 millimeter home processing kit. And they had built this really cool record album with, 
with guided, with guided loops at the top. And so, same principle. Um, you know, you wind the film and then you immerse it in these, vert these horizontal tanks. And, um, and so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come up with feature film quality ways to uh, process my film. And so um, to, to, to use this method that Martin uses or that you saw there of laying the film down in these horizontal trays, uh, for me, um, to process 200 feet of 35 millimeter film, I need a tray one meter by one meter 50. So, you know, pretty much the size of this dais here, this ta table that I'm at. So that's the size that I would need to wrap 200 feet of film around the frame, lay it down into um, a tray, and I need like four or five trays because I need a developer, I need a bath, I need a fix, I need a wash, I need a hypo. So um, I was thinking about the real estate that that would require um, to, uh, to build that kind of a space. And then, I'm not sure where, but I, I had this uh, dip and dunk idea, and I thought, aha, what if I don't use horizontal trays, what if I use vertical trays? I stand them up, and rather than laying the frame down, I put them in, and I was I was so excited, like jumping up and down. I was like, "Oh yeah, vertical trays, man! That's just gonna that's gonna like reduce my the space need, and oh, it's gonna be so cool! I can move it from one to the other. I can have them stacked up." And I was talking with a friend. Um, uh, I had a conversation with a friend online, um, and uh, I'm I'm all excited, and I'm telling him about this. And then he sends me a link to some photographs. Turns out somebody stole my idea 120 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, these guys. You know, they're, they got these vertical tanks and they're wrapping film around these frames and they're processing film. And so, um, so yeah, okay, so I'm not sem seminal, but still very excited about that. And, uh, and I thought, okay, so I'm gonna pursue this. This is a possible way to work. Um, anyway, this is, uh, these are some nice f photos I found. Um, and the great thing about this process is uh, you can dry the film on the same rack. So I like that idea. Anyway, I was jumping up and down, very excited. I'd love to build this. This is a drying rack. Yeah, I, I, uh, I would just be thrilled to have this in my living room. Anyway, I like machines. So what I decided to do is I decided to try a prototype. I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a try um, because I'm gonna apply for a bunch of money and I need to prove to the pe pe people that I can do something that people did 120 years ago. So um, I decided to work with plexiglass. So um, uh, I, I, with the help of an engineering student, we designed plexiglass tanks, which this doesn't require a lot of work, but building them was. So I, I only had enough money to buy, to build three. I don't know if you've ever bought pl plexiglass as an artist, but it's kind of expensive. Um, so I built these three tanks, um, and uh, with one of them I, I put a valve on and a drain, and because I was gonna, uh, the intention was that I would have a developing tank and I'd have a fixing tank, and um, I would use the, the, the third tank as a multiple wash, a pre-bath, post-developer wash, uh, post-fix wash, uh, uh, detergent uh, drying agent wash, and then a fi final bath. So anyway, I was, I was gonna use that. Um, and that kind of gi gives you the scale. Um, there's a 400 foot roll of uh, 16 millimeter film. So then I built a, a frame. Um, I, I built it out of plexiglass as well. Um, and the idea was that the film would wrap around this frame and I, I found these little alligator clips, and uh, that's the elastic off my broccoli. Um, so that I, could hold the, I could hold the film tight at both ends. Um, so uh, the, the, the rack would fit inside my <coughs> vertical tank, like that. Here's not such a great photo, but you can see the film winding across the top. Uh, the engineer that designed it thought, a tiny little groove might, might, might be enough. 
Uh, we can talk about that later. So, in my now, uh, in my uh, my late girlfriend's basement, um, she let me uh, run my lab. So this is me uh, processing film for the first time on that rack. Um, I was rushed uh, to meet the grant de deadline, so I wasn't able to experiment with the saltwater fix. I just I was still getting up to speed with the caffeinol and the chemistry and um, building everything. So I, 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 uh, I went soft and I ended up using traditional fix for this, for this first test. So I built sort of the same kind of thing. I built a snooth and I, I uh, put a little le electric fan in at the end and I sucked all the, 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 the fumes out. Um, and process film. Uh, yeah, I guess that's that's the film coming out of some kind of a bath. The tank in the middle was a bath. There we go. So that's what I would do. I had these three tanks, and then the tank in the middle was a continuously replenished uh, uh, tank where the water would be running in. Um, Drying was uh, not nearly as sexy and sophisticated as the as 120 years ago. Um, actually, I think I saw a photo last night. Somebody had a photo of the film drying. Charles, ha yeah, Andre has a film. It looks kind of like that. Yeah, I think you were horizontal. Uh, this all f spilled onto the floor after this photo was taken, uh, and I had to re rewash it. But anyway, so that's how I'm drying the film. And uh, that's not really a very great uh, shot. It looks much better here, but uh, that's the film. So that, and it was 16 mil. So once again, um, I used my son. Um, now I'll see, I've got a, a Vimeo link. We won't look at the whole, oh, oh no. I have to move it over. All right. I don't know where it is, Joel. Okay, thank you. I'm feeling better already. Oh no, I got the spinning be beach ball. Okay, I think we're okay. Server not found. Oh, I'm not online. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You're gonna log me in with the administrator pop password? I'm turning away. This is what they do when you use your card at the grocery store. They, they turn away. Sorry about that. Good thing we started on time. Sorry, that was a joke. Oh, my password. Oh, yeah, my password is X. <laughs> yeah, one X, lowercase. Maybe just rest yeah, yeah. Something there, it's exciting. <laughs> you just drag it over the other side there. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'll go fast. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, you can hit play. We can go full screen um, if you can. I don't know where full screen is. It's usually right there. Anyway, that's okay. Uh, we'll just, uh, we're not going to look at the whole thing. But anyway, uh, is it rolling? You can't tell on the prairies, you know, nothing really moves very much. <laughs> it, looks, uh, it, looks like it's, it looks like it's not moving, but... Um, no, it's plain, but uh, yeah, okay. There's some lag time. Anyway, um, so the 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 results were good, in the sense that I I was able. This was all the film that I processed in uh, in my uh, in my vertical uh, tanks, and uh, I uh, it was on 16, so the results are a little bit greenier. They're not they're not quite as um, as uh, polished, but. Uh, 
Oh, no. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, there's a lot of compression. And there's my son again. He's so great. So uh, anyway, I drove out to the prairies a couple of summers ago, and we shot a bunch, a bunch of film. And we found the last spike there, beginning of colonialism. Anyway, I don't want to. You can go online and look at this all you want. How's that? Um, I think I'll just go back to my PowerPoint. I just needed to prove to you that I actually process film in that. Can you bring up my PowerPoint again, please? Great, thank you. Okay. Okay. There we go. Nicely done. Okay, so based on those results, I put together an application to um, uh, build a green lab. And uh, I was successful. I received uh, an FRQSC uh, grant last year. And um, the proposal was to uh, build uh, a lab uh, and refine the chemical process uh, so that I could shoot a feature film and process all the film in the lab. And the finished film would be proof that the lab worked. And um, there's a bunch of other, there was a bunch of other goals that were with that. You know, I wanted to refine the process. I wanted to play around with different aesthetics, different chemistry, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We don't need to uh, go into all that. But I wanted to make it safe. Essentially, I wanted to make it safe for other artists who were working with film, that they could work in their bathtub and they didn't need to be uh, stressed out. And I wanted to make it safe for the environment so that when we dispose of our materials, we're not uh, polluting the world. So uh, I'm hoping that my research will um, spread out and that pe people can adapt whatever um, apparatus I do end up inventing uh, and whatever recipes that I do use um, that other artists can, um, can, can use that as well. And so, um, yeah, so my film will be sitting in saltwater fix for 24 to 36 hours. And so. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs>